Hi, I'm Maggie Mestrich, Director of Business Development with the Carmel Swim Club and Carmel Swim Academy. We share stories and experiences from our Carmel Swim Club alumni as a way to demonstrate the incredible, long-lasting impact that swimming, and specifically swimming with Carmel Swim Club, can have on your life. Today, I am talking to Mark Cooney. Hi, Mark. Cooney. Hi, Mark. Hi, how's it going, Maggie? Great, how are you? I am doing all right, just enjoying the, this starts to look like spring again, so that's always nice. Thank goodness, We're, I think everybody's pretty happy about that. <laughs> are you ready to kind of jump in here? Yeah, sounds good. Okay, can you place yourself within context? Oh, and there's Finn, your dog. <laughs> yeah, 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 my fiance just got home. Okay. So Okay, let's restart. <laughs> we'll restart. Okay. I'll keep in what I got. I'll, I'll be right. able to go back and edit. Okay. So the question, can you place yourself in the context of Carmel Swimming? How old were you when you started? When did you do it? All that fun stuff. So I started when I was, I think, nine years old. It was, I think I was nine. Um, okay. I was, I did like a lot of kids. I did like the summer swimming team. Mm -hmm. And I remember... I got beat by Harrison Wagner, who <laughs> went on to win the Ivy Leagues in the 50 free, mm -hmm. and he beat the 25 backstroke, and I was ticked off. So I was like, okay, in order to beat him from now on, I need to start doing like year-round swimming. So <laughs> he started the exact same time I did. Okay. Um, but from there, it kind of just took off. It became kind of the one sport I did. You know, I did a little bit of basketball, you know, mm -hmm. soccer, whatever. But the one thing about Carmel Swim Club is that they would email my parents, you know, reminders to pay so they would never forget. <laughs> um, and they just like took off, you know. I I was always something that, you know, it was easy. Like the high school was right there. Um, you know, I just kind of just stuck with it. You know, all my mm -hmm. friends were swimming. So I just I just kept on <laughs> doing it. And uh, so, yeah. <laughs> okay. Very good. Where are you now, geographically, professionally, personally, whatever you'd like to share? So I am um, in central Indiana still, moved around a little bit, um, went to school in Pittsburgh, then I moved around to Kansas City, I lived in Florida for a bit, then I moved back here, and I currently work for Magellan um, RX, which is a pharmacy solution company but basically mm -hmm. i just do the business analytics for them so okay. sit, i sit and stare at spreadsheets all day I was, gonna, I was gonna say there has to be a lot of spreadsheets involved in this <laughs> basically that's yeah that's what i do all day and you have a wedding coming up i do i'm getting married i got engaged um on july 7th um, oh, that's my anniversary day <laughs> it's a good day also okay. my parents which i i didn't oh. really realize because I, we were supposed to go to Ireland. I okay. had the ring. Then everything mm -hmm. kind of shut down. So um, I ended up having to basically, it got to the point where I was trying to like lead it on, but she kind of like knew I was coming. So I was mm -hmm. like, well, I'm going to do it this day. And then like I was talking to my sister, getting prepared. She goes, you realize that's the parents' anniversary. <laughs> and so we went to the exact same restaurant my parents went to. Which is oh. kind of weird, but you know, we went, um, we got engaged in our, our backyard. Okay. Um, so yeah, and then we're getting married in October. So okay. very is exciting. The, will the wedding be here or somewhere? Else? Yeah, the wedding's gonna be. It's like it's kind of near Anderson. There's this like really okay. nice like ten acres. This this family they kind of um, half their property is a wedding venue. So we mm -hmm. kind of found a steal on that. So we're very, awesome. very excited. Oh, well, congratulations. It's always fun to have something good to celebrate. <laughs> yeah, it's really exciting. Okay, we're gonna bring it back to the water. All right. Can you share some of your earliest memories of being around the water? It doesn't have to be related to competitive swimming. It can be anything. So my earliest, um, memories were I lived two doors my parents lived two doors down from the Smoky Road pool on 136th mm -hmm. street I know some people I, I, at one point you guys practice there I don't know if you guys still do or not yeah it's a while but I remember I had private I had a private swim lesson with one of the people who worked there I just remember every we go in the morning I got really excited I would jump in have a big old smile on my face my mom <laughs> always thought that I was gonna drown because my why was my mouth was so <laughs> wide open <laughs> Um, and then I just remember like from there, you know, I 
got into the local swim team. You know, I was always swimming up. You know, when I was, I remember when I was, I think six years old, I had to swim the 13, 14 relay, uh, oh, the, like the 100 Bedley relay. Um, mm -hmm. I was, I was always a backstroker because I didn't know how to breathe right. So as soon as I would start breathing, you were smiling the whole time. I was smiling the whole time. So I liked backstroke because I didn't have to worry about breathing at all. So it was a little easier for me. Okay. That's really fun. Yeah. Can you identify the most significant lesson that you learned during your time with Carmel Swim Club? I would say it probably is a combination of you're going to have to it's like just you have to work hard. And mm -hmm. even when you work hard, sometimes you won't get the results you want. But if you just keep working at it and you just, you know, courage and perseverance. Yeah. You know, I, I have that tattooed on my arm for a reason. <laughs> um, and it just, if you just do your best and work hard, and even if it's not the result you wanted, you'll mm -hmm. be better off for it. And if, especially now, I feel that a lot of people my age have, don't kind of understand the importance of hard work or like, you know, the fact that you're not kind of given everything. Mm -hmm. And I feel that what Carmel did for me is it really showed me hey, you're going to have to work for what you want. And yeah. even then, you might not always get it, but you're going to be better off for it, no matter what. You know, even if it's not necessarily exactly what you wanted, you're going to, like, I look back and, you know, even if there's necessarily things that, you know, even a couple of years ago, you know, it wasn't quite the result I wanted at the time. I look back, I'm like, hey, you know what? I'm happy where I'm at, you know? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm happy with, I gave the effort I needed and everything, you know, has worked out. You know, as yeah. long as I kind of keep that attitude going. That's great. What advice or insights would you offer to current swimmers? Um, Kind of just that is just, you know, just put in the effort mm -hmm. and you might not always get the exact result you wanted. Like I, I remember one of the things was that I was on the precipice of always going to junior naps when I was in high school yeah. and I never quite got there, but like, you know, six months like less than six months into my college career i got my national cut yeah you know and it was it was literally i was always on the precipice and you know i i was working hard you know i was like always just right there right there right there you know and then eventually just it just worked for me it might have been a little later than i wanted like obviously i was already too late for me to go juniors but <laughs> hey I, w I went to nationals you know right. like just like just right after that so it wasn't necessarily the fact that i wasn't working hard enough or you know i wasn't good enough it was just like it just wasn't my time you know mm -hmm. and if you know i kind of had the perspective and then and two is like i feel like a lot of the times i was so focused on giving that that i think maybe that's one of the reasons why i didn't get it because i was so focused and so nervous and every time i would swim i'd be so wrecked with nerves mm. it's like oh my god i have to do this i have to do this and i just forgot and, and chris plum told me this a lot and i never really clicked with me until after was that i would always be focused on okay like you know, my first 50, I need to go like this time, a second 50, I need to do this sure. time. And then he basically had to kept telling me, he's like, stop focusing on the time, just focus on the process of what you need to get done. Right. And it wasn't until like after I was in college swimming is that I realized like, hey, like I was so focused on that, that I was, you know, I feel like at times that was holding me back. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting. Um, what if I'm going to ask you later about some of your favorite Carmel swimming memories, but <coughs> I have one that features you as a swimmer and I'm trying to remember I probably was 2011 down at Lakeside and it has nothing to do with how you performed in the pool but I don't know if you remember getting out of the water for warm-ups and you gave a heck of a speech yeah I was like one and only <laughs> but I think um I think what stands out to me about that with you is that you had been a leader, but some of our best leaders and some of the best leaders in the world are not always the most vocal, but they lead through their actions. So as you've been saying about talking through the process and being patient and controlling your effort and your attitude, you you did those things. But this was, and people could see your example that way and follow it. Do you remember that and what inspired you to kind of stand up and really 
talk to everyone in such a passionate way? I don't know. I think it was like, I think I was just kind of like just being a goofball. I think mm -hmm. I was like standing on top of like one of those, like at Lakeside, they have like the deck and I think they have like a built-in, like, like a bench, mm -hmm. like one of those benches. I was just staying on that. And I think it was, uh, Ian, um, yeah. Ian was just like, could you want to do a speech? I was like, okay, sure. <laughs> and I just like, I don't know, I just went from there. I just kind of like pulled it out of my butt. <laughs> I mean, I just, you know, I was kind of just in a good mood. I was feeling great. And I was like, you know, I was rolling with it. So, I mean, it was just, I think it was right, the right place at the right time. You know, it's yeah. Lakeside was always one of my favorites to go to. It's one heck of a pool. Yeah. You know, it's a great time. It was a team trip, you know, I think at that point, yeah, it was like, it was just a group of like, you know, that group of us were just so close knit and we were always just having a great time. And I just think it was one of the things where just like, it was just the right atmosphere for me to just like, you know, just have a good speech, I guess. I remember looking at Ian and Rock afterwards and just, we were all like, we're gonna swim pretty fast today. I think, I think we just set the tone right there. Yeah, I think, um, oh, um, I forget, someone just like went out and they just had like the very first heat we won, mm -hmm. you know, I forget exactly who it was, um, but oh, there's just so many people that it can't, it's hard to remember who it was, but I just remember from like, that was just a fun, just such a fun night. <laughs> yeah, it was. All right. We'll, we'll bring it back. I know that was towards the end of your Carmel swimming career, but what would you tell somebody who was thinking about getting started with Carmel swimming? I would just say like, just give it like i just think give it a solid chance you know because mm -hmm. i think one of the things that's hard especially when you just start out is that if you're like not used to swimming year round it's definitely a skill set that's going to take a lot of it's going to take some time to get like you know get used to yeah I just, like, now it's like if i jump in the pool now like it does not feel good <laughs> for that first couple you know first couple days but just like to give it time you know give it a chance you know and just don't give up on it until you really you know see what's all about because some of the most fun i had you know were those summer meets you know yeah. you know were those you know end of end of season meets you know when we were like we were feeling good we were ready we were excited you know and then just like give yourself an opportunity to, like become part of that community because i mean mm -hmm. my best friends my whole entire my best friends still like still i think of of everyone in my like just kind of like i'm getting married i was i think about groomsmen four of them swam with me and the other last one was my brother so like like my my whole family my whole like friend group like all my closest friends i would say are related to swimming mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> all right would you share a favorite it doesn't have to be one you can give me a couple if you want to caramel swimming memory uh there's a lot. Yeah. Um, I would, I mean, I kind of like, we kind of talked about one, just the team trips. Like, mm -hmm. I know it's probably answer you get a lot, but it's something that, you know, I look back on, you know, and as a caramel swimmer, like they, they were the most fun, you know, cause it was just me and our friends. I remember we had an operation Omaha trip <laughs> and we, we basically, we were, it was like, you know, it was me, Zach Banks and Derek all in a room together. And it was just like this really weird combination because you had me and Zach who were mm -hmm. like our senior year. And then you had Derek Statter, who's this like young freshman, freshman. who he would just say the darndest things. Like that's the best yeah. we could put about it. He was just this kid who just like, he would just have the, like, I just remember he had the funniest things. Like I remember like, there was just like just to give an example of how funny he was like he took his girlfriend to his first date and he had on the halo playlist in the background <laughs> like that was Derek Satter so he was just he was just a hilarious kid yeah. he was like he would say some stuff you're like did that really just say that um mm -hmm. but i just remember that and it was just like that and you know Elliot Johns probably one well, of my friends i still talk to just like that whole group of friends and you know, I would say the this swimming related, I think the number one memory I have thinking about it was my senior year at a high school meet 
how we were we were down. We had to basically get fourth place to win state, and okay. we lead off, and we we lead off last last race. Uh, we lead off and we touch and we're eighth. And we were sitting there, we were just like, oh my gosh, no, like this is terrible. And looking back at it, like it was seven of the eight people in the final of the 100 free let off. And then okay. we had Elliot, who was like probably like 15th or 16th, but it was like, it was unfair for him. So we were sitting there, like, oh my God, no. And just like the excitement we had as we like we got into the race, like we got a little closer, a little closer, mm -hmm. a little co closer. And then John Ashensky comes in, the last heat, and he pulls the you know, he sits there and he just drafts off the guy right next to him to get us up to it. And he pulls like a 45, which at the time was quick. Maybe yeah. it's not as quick as it used to be. Uh, look at some of the times people are going now, but it was quick back then. I just remember that's probably one of the moments that I'm always going to remember. Yeah. <laughs> For him just coming in out of nowhere and just winning. And, like, and that group of guys, mm -hmm. you know, thinking about it, like I grew up with all of them. You know, I remember... Elliot Johns was the first guy I, I swam with at Carmel. Yeah. You know, Zach Banks was a kid who came in late, but was a really good friend of mine. Jack Belford, you know, Clayne Hyam, um, you know, Vic Schleich, all those mm -hmm. guys, we, we grew up together. You know, we, we were around each other for more than we were with our families since we were like eight or nine, you know? Yeah. And obviously, you know, some of us, you know, did a, you know, didn't stay the whole time. Some of us, you know, kind of came in, but like Michael Wayne, that was another one. Mm -hmm. And I just remember all these guys and just have that moment where, you know, we put so much on the line. It was so much of our, like our, you know, friendship. That was the last meet where we were all together. We all were like, you know, going, you know, tapered for, and to have that, you know, it comes so dramatically. And the fact that yeah. we almost, you know, lost state and then we kind of won at the last minute. It was just, it kind of was a culmination of kind of all the hard work we did and like kind of like, you know, you know, it was our last hurrah, really. Yeah. <laughs> for that group. That's fun. Do you think there's anything that would surprise people to learn about Carmel Swim Club? I mean, I would say the one thing that I kind of always kind of got annoyed at when you kind of heard the stuff around was that kind of, it was always like the rich kid school or like the mm -hmm. school with like all like you know, everyone would move to go there. But I mean, there's a reason for that is that we probably worked the hardest. We probably worked the smartest, you know, we, and it was all, it was kids like, you know, it was, it was just the fact that we were all, dedicated to something and we were serious about it like mm -hmm. we didn't do any other activities i remember you know my freshman year one of our, like you know i remember someone was going to do a club more of countries like you don't have time for that like you have to be dedicated to this you know and if you are dedicated you're going to get some great results yeah and you know and also just the fact that like there was so many times where you know we were probably the busiest, but we also had some of the best grades. You know, we didn't have time to mess around or get in trouble. Like we were, yeah. you know, we were, we were basically just like, okay, like you get home at six o'clock at night. And it basically was like, well, I got practice tomorrow, you know, yeah. at 6 a.m. So I have to, I have to make sure I get my homework done, you know? And we, but my mom was always happy. She said like, you know, I was too tired to ever get into trouble. My mom said the same thing, <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, I mean, that was the thing that I just think, you know, one of the things you kind of don't see is that it's really hard work. Like, I don't want anyone to like kind of who's thinking about it to think it's going to just be a breeze, but like, it's, it's worth it. And, you know, it keeps you, it keeps you disciplined. You know, that's one of the one, the, the biggest thing that I kind of realized once I was done swimming is that like, it kept me like to a, like a schedule and it kept me making yeah. sure that I got all my stuff that I needed to do because I didn't really have an option to goof around or not do anything I wasn't supposed to. Right. That's great. Anything else that you want to add or talk about? Oh, not really. I would just like say like that. One of the things that I kind of look back at, you know, my time swimming, you know, and especially with Carmel, you know, I have like I literally have a tattoo, you know, mm -hmm. courage and perseverance on my my shoulder on my arm, um, and you know. 
at times, you know, like especially with Chris, like I would say he was looking back probably one of the smartest guys when it came to like the process of training and the process of yeah. training. You know, and I just remember that, you know, he probably was really hard to me at times. We didn't always see eye to eye, but like mm -hmm. looking back at it, like I just remember this one time where we were like, I was disagreeing with him about something and he sat me down and we spent an hour after practice going over exactly why we were doing what we did. Yeah. You know, that's something that I kind of looked at and I appreciate as a person that, you know, he knew he was right. You know, because he spent a lot more time than I did on on this stuff. But he was willing to sit down and he was willing to mm -hmm. explain it to me. And I just feel like, you know, just that just taught me how important it was as a person to, you know, treat people like that. Yeah. Like, you know, always be the person to, you know, not just expect people to follow what you say because you say it, you know. And, you know, to be someone who can explain your decision making and explain what you're doing. And, you know... At times he'd do that. And I still disagree with him, but I had to respect why he did it. And, you know, mm -hmm. and I just feel like having someone like that, you know, as a coach, you know, and kind of looking back and kind of some of the people, you know, I deal with, it just, it just made me so much, I think a better man, a better person, mm -hmm. you know, a better friend, yeah. you know, and I just feel like it's just one of those, one of those people that I think looking back at my life, I'm happy he was a part of it. That's pretty great. Well, it goes to show the mission. I mean, courage and perseverance is a great, those are great values, but our mission yeah. is to teach excellence through swimming for life. So yeah. it sounds I mean, like it, it worked out. I mean, it did. Yeah. And you know, it, at times maybe, you know, I remember one time Ian told me it was like, there was moments he was like, I was kind of worried how you're going to turn out, but then he's like, Hey, but you, you, <laughs> you did it. You survived. You turned out great. So, yeah, you know, I'm, I wouldn't replace it for anything. I think, I think, you know, if I could go back in time, I'd still do it. Um, mm -hmm. you know, it's, you know, it's something that I'll always cherish, you know, even if I'm not the best about being in the pool right now, sure. um, right. Like, you know, I wouldn't replace it for anything. And it's, I mean, it's, it, there's a reason why it's one of the best swim clubs in the country. <laughs> Definitely. Well, thank you, Mark. I appreciate your time. No problem. I appreciate talking to you, Maggie. And, uh, it's nice to catch up and see you. And, uh, you know, it's kind of looking back and it was crazy, you know, being like, oh, my gosh, Maggie Moss is reaching out to me. But, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm happy you did. I'm happy well, to you. have talked about am, my experience. Oh, I'm happy.